In this session, we're going to explore the Delphi study process in some more detail. Now, we examined a range of different um, consensus forming processes in the last session. But Delphi studies represent by far the most popular form of consensus decision making and research processes. Now, in this session, we're going to look at the Delphi technique in some more detail, some of the online Delphi tools, and how Delphi studies are being used in research, particularly educational technology research. So the Delphi technique. In the main, it's used to try to develop a consensus. Um, but that consensus can be on a, on a wide range of different aspects. So sometimes we can use it for problem solving to try to work out the the what a group feels is the most likely solution to a problem. Other times it might be around planning where we should place our limited resources, for example. So there are a range of different aspects that we can apply the Delphi process around. But essentially we need to have a relatively generalizable question that we want to develop a consensus around. So it's not the same as empirical research where we're trying to get an exact measurement of something where we use the Delphi technique and consensus techniques when often that is not possible where we have a range of different possibilities but without any clear evidence as to which of them is correct or which is the most appropriate or most significant and we want to develop a consensus from experts as to what they feel is the most correct response. So this is often used in educational technologies where we want to develop a consensus around what the most significant new technology is going to impact upon education. Um, but we can also use it around policy making, which area of a educational institution um, needs the most focus on online education, for example, or requires the most retraining around certain issues. So the idea of, and the strengths of the Delphi technique is that it builds a consensus from experts, that it's anonymous, so that the experts can provide that, that opinion without fear or favor um, resulting from various reputations or implications of their support for various positions. And it can be generally done quite quickly and efficiently. So, as was mentioned last week, the Delphi technique was developed by the Air Force at the beginning of the Cold War because they had a lot of really big projects that they had to put a huge amount of money behind, but there was no real specific evidence as to which was going to be the most successful or the most important and significant. And so they developed a process of um, using the Delphi technique to gain a consensus from a range of experts as to where the strategic initiatives needed to be focused. So as mentioned previously, the three main aspects that define a Delphi technique is the anonymity of the participants, the feedback process whereby the experts are presented with um, the results of preceding rounds on which they then use those results to inform their subsequent rounds of decision making. And the researchers control of the data um, because the, the an anonymous nature of the Delphi process, um, there needs to be someone that manages that data and looks after it and processes it. Okay, so we do have to make sure for the Delphi process to work that we are using real experts. Um, it can't just be anybody, um, unless the questions being um, explored are questions that anybody has expertise in. Um, but in the main, we tend to explore issues using the Delphi technique that rely upon a significant level of expertise in order to provide informed decisions 
around various options. So the problem with that, though, is, of course, that experts have different ideas. Um, not everyone has the same idea around various issues. Um, and that is part of the reason why we have to have this process. If we could just go to any expert and get the consensus for the whole field, then that would be simple. Simply go to an expert and, and that solves the problem. Um, but as we saw with climate change debate, there were a lot of experts that um, were concerned about climate change, but there were also some experts that dismissed the issue. Um, and one of the problems with the climate change debate is that both sides were then given equal weighting in the public arena. Whereas a Delphi study, for example, would have allowed the consensus of the majority to be put forward as the most valid um, response to the issue, rather than simply presenting dichotomies or different perspectives and presenting them as though they had equal um, weighting within the scientific community in this case. Okay, so there are a range of ways of doing the Delphi technique. There's the sort of the pure, purest approach, but then there are a lot of what are called modified Delphi techniques, which use aspects of the Delphi process or modifications to the original Delphi process, um, but also produce valid responses and research findings. So one traditional example is where we give the participants um, an instrument, let's say a survey, that they have to respond to a range of questions on. Then we look at the results of that and we tally that up or present it in some sort of um, summarized format and then provide that summary back to the experts along with a, the same survey again or sometimes a modified survey based upon their initial responses. And they then work through that process again. Um, in the example provided in the notes, uh, by ranking the various options on a Likert scale, which is simply a one to four or one to five scale, or one to six, depending upon how you've defined the Likert scale. And then a set of data is then provided from the experts from the second round. Now, if necessary, that would then be summarized again and provided back to the experts for a third round. Or if sufficient understanding about the consensus being developed has been achieved from the first two rounds, it could then be analyzed by the researchers and presented as a finding from the Delphi process as to the consensus that's been achieved from the experts. So this is just again a summary. We start generally with a questionnaire, provide that to the various um, experts involved. They then provide their responses. It's analyzed and synthesized. And then either the questions are changed, reformatted or reformulated and then provided back to the participants. All the results are then uh, presented. And that can go through several rounds, but normally not more than two or three. Um, if a consensus is not emerging after two or three rounds, then there's probably going to be greater issues involved uh, with the process. Okay. Now, generally, in order to gain a consensus, we need a strong amount of collaboration. We need people to work together to generate ideas and, and come to an agreement on which is the ideas that are going to represent the group or represent their consensus. But that can take a lot of time, particularly when you've got strong opinions and different perspectives on an issue. Um, and so a Delphi technique can help overcome those barriers. But it does have some limitations. Um, by atomizing everything, we take away a lot of that discussion. So there's not a lot of discussion that occurs in the Delphi process, in the pure form of it. Um, we rely upon 
the responses from surveys. Um, sometimes people can provide narrative responses and they can be shared, but that can often threaten the anonymity because people can sort of tell uh, writing styles and opinions and if they're more if they're expressed in more detail. So there needs to be some care taken around keeping things anonymous, um, but allowing sufficient feedback so that people can change their minds from their initial perspectives or initial positions uh, that they took on the instrument or the survey that was provided at the start. The advantage though is that it can be done very quickly. Uh, people can do it um, online now. And so these sorts of processes can be provided very efficiently in terms of a research process. Whereas getting a whole lot of people together in a room and to have in-depth discussions can be quite complicated. Although also very rewarding. The other advantage is that it can reduce the influence of particular personalities and the prestige of certain opinions and, and um, leading figures within a debate by providing an opportunity for everyone to contribute equally. Now, there is a criticism that the results of a Delphi technique, because it is um, managed by the researcher, can be biased by that researcher. Um, of course, a lot of it is hidden from the participants and not everything is made transparent by the very nature of the process. So that is a concern. It also presents what's called the illusion of community building. The idea that um, there is a community of practice formed that undertakes a consensus building process akin to a community coming together and discussing things in depth. Now, the discussion doesn't inc um, occur in depth in a traditional Delphi technique. So there is much less opportunity for a community to form and build around that. That said, there have been Delphi processes that do build a community. Um, once the consensus is achieved, then the participants can be made known and discussion can then continue on from that community around those issues. And then in a year's time, for example, as many of the ongoing surveys do, um, they can come back together and do another round of the Delphi process, knowing roughly who's in that process. So there is somewhat less anonymous, but not knowing how they're voting and the anonymity of the actual Delphi process is maintained, even though it's framed within a wider community. Because the reality is within a body of human knowledge, um, the experts known, or the experts in that body are reasonably well known. Um, normally there's only a couple of dozen real experts in most fields, um, and even taking in emerging experts and so forth, it'd be rare to have a Delphi study in which at least some of the participants aren't reasonably understood to be involved. But the Delphi study process, if done uh, properly, won't allow them to have undue influence because they still only have an equal vote. And there's no real way of trying to change other people's votes other than sim simply by contributing um, their opinion as to the consensus process. Okay, and as mentioned, the Delphi technique is used quite extensively in educational technology research, particularly around forecasting of technology um, advances into the future with the horizon reports and the um, learning initiatives and future of the internet series, um, all of which are trying to come up with some perspective on what might occur into the future. And while we have seen in our explorations around doing future studies, there are other techniques to explore that. The consensus building technique from experts is also another way of trying to explore what may occur into the future and has proven reasonably uh, robust in providing uh, predictions about what may occur. There are, however, some criticisms around that. In the main, it tends to provide a a normalizing of perspectives. So outliers tend to be reduced in terms of their ability to uh, come to the fore in a consensus process. 
and the the majority of opinion coming into the Delphi process is normally what occurs coming out of the process. Um, it is fundamentally a consensus process that is part of the designed intent of the Delphi technique. But when we're exploring the future, sometimes the what the majority feels will occur into the future is not necessarily what will occur. Um, so there are pluses and minuses in that respect. Okay, so in Teams, uh, post a topic in education that you feel would be beneficial to have a Delphi technique process applied to it. Some sort of question or ranking or policy making aspect that you feel that a Delphi technique could be useful in trying to address. So to assist with the Delphi technique, there have been a range of online tools developed. Um, we are using one in for your portfolio task, the All Our Ideas, but there are a range of other ones, some much more complex and involved. So eDelphi is one such process which allows a range of um, rounds of Delphi uh, techniques, of Delphi um, cycles to progress through. So starting with your expert panel, you have your initial questionnaire. Oh, so, sorry, starting with a research problem, you then form a research group to identify what the questions will be in the initial questionnaire and who will be on the expert panel. And the expert panel responds to the questionnaire in the first round of the Delphi technique. Um, there is analysis done and then subsequent rounds of the Delphi technique are then conducted. And then finally, a report is produced on the consensus that's been achieved from the process. And there is an online tool that can take you through setting it up. And there's a video clip on the course material that will um, explain that process in a little bit more detail. So it's more structured and formalized than all our ideas, which is really a co-joint pairs analysis tool, um, which we're using for the Delphi technique, but we're doing the Delphi technique essentially manually. This automates the full Delphi technique in one encapsulated online tool. Um, Misadel is another online Delphi technique tool. Uh, for game, you identify the problem, establish a panel for, of experts. They're given a questionnaire. Um, in this technique, there is a consultation process done um, analysis conducted, and then other rounds of that progressing through, leading to then a better decision through collective intelligence report. So one of the key ideas behind this is to try to create that shared vision, that shared perspective, that consensus. Now that can be used in a whole range of different issues. It might be in a school situation where you need to come up with a consensus around what um, subjects to offer students the next year. Now everyone will have their own ideas and opinions um, and there'll be various pressure groups and special interests within an organization, but a Delphi technique can try to help establish a shared perspective on that. Or maybe what is going to be the mission of the educational organization? What is going to be the vision, the purpose of the organization? Coming up with a consensus on that can be, again, complex and difficult, particularly when some people have particularly strong opinions around different um, aspects of a shared vision. Um, but another technique that the Delphi process can be used for. And again, there's a little video clip in the course material for you to have a look through that process. So Delphi studies are used in research um, and very often in educational technologies research. So I've provided you with two papers um, to assist you in looking at these um, in the course material. And I encourage you to have a look at those. The first of which is the paper by Green. And in this paper, it goes through and explores the 
the structure of the Delphi technique um, and summarizes the processes involved. So as normal, it gives a little background, takes you through explaining how the Delphi technique can be used in education, um, how it can be used to formulate expert opinions and gain consensus on those expert opinions, sets out some guidelines for its use um, around the idea that it's not used for analytical um, techniques, it's used for subjective collective judgments or consensus, um, how the individuals um, that are contributing to the complex problem shouldn't be having communication within the process, so it needs to be anonymous, and how that should be heterogeneous, so it shouldn't all be um, those with the same opinion um, or those from the same demographical group, say in a large Delphi study. So you want to get a variety of perspectives on the problem being explored in the Delphi process. You don't want to go into the process having pre-selected everyone that's going to come to an agreement already on something that you already know how they're going to answer the question. Um, so it takes you through the process as we've talked about um, in some detail. Um, nothing new in that aspect, but highlighting again around panel selection, that it needs to be focused on experts. Um, the Delphic probe is a particular um, concept that was used to try to clarify the question that the Delphi study attempts to answer, that it needs to be a probing question. It's an attempt to develop a consensus around something um, rather than just gathering information or gathering perspectives and things of that nature. That said, it can be used for exploratory research and various other processes. Um, some of the elements in an educational setting that needs to be considered is the campus environment. Um, the fact that we're trying to get, who are we trying to get to come together to make these decisions? Uh, who will be included in the Delphi panels? Will we include students? Will we include parents? Um, will beginning teachers be considered experts? Um, is the questions and things that we're trying to determine such that they will be able to provide informed um, contributions to the discussions or do we need very experienced teachers or is it just done, going to be done by administrators? Um, so these are the things that need to be considered as we develop who is going to be involved in the panel and the sorts of questions that were going to be presented in the survey. Um, the focus on developing a consensus needs to be made clear. We're not trying to determine something empirically or to answer something absolutely. We're trying to establish a consensus of opinion. Um, sometimes there are focus groups that are formed to come up with the survey questions that are going to be provided. Um, sometimes we do more extensive research to develop those questions. Um, again, most commonly th through a survey, but there can be also focus groups and other processes involved prior to doing the Delphi study that help define the issue and the questions that are going to be presented to the experts in the, in the study. Um, and we can also do a whole lot of prior research that explores the issue. So essentially, we start with this process of coming up with the, the panel um, and the questions that are going to be provided in the Delphi study, considering the campus and the, who, who the participants are and, the, and the, all the different complexities and politics involved in an organization. Um, looking at the instructional design processes involved and all the processes involved in setting up the study. And the aim is then to establish a consensus. But once the consensus has been achieved, it then needs to feed into the organization, into their ongoing research and the opinions and perspectives of individuals so that they can then plan and organize to make changes, which should then be evaluated and then if needed, fed back into a new Delphi process that can then explore the issue again in a few years time or when the issue needs to be explored again. So Delphi studies by their nature are very applied. Um, it's not fundamental research. It's not trying to 
um, better understand the nature of reality and the nature of how organizations work and things of those issues. We're trying to answer specific questions um, and using a consensus model based upon experts to achieve that. But there are limitations. Um, one is that it can be, can simplify the problem, can reduce it down to its basic elements and take away a lot of the nuances and, and complexities of an issue and problem. Um, it again can provide the illusion that experts are the best ones to answer the problem. Um, commonly happens in education. Uh, experts are drawn from outside of education very often um, to provide uh, their opinion on what should be done within the schooling sector in particular. It happens quite a lot. Um, very commonly they're drawn from business where they've been able to manage multi-million dollar companies very successfully. And from that wealth of expertise, they're asked to solve problems within the field of education um, as to what students should be taught or how schools should be run and managed and things of that nature. So who experts are within a field is, an, is a political problem. Um, and so there needs to be decisions made as to who is included in an expert panel, but that decision-making process itself can be fraught with um, complexities and, and issues. Sometimes expert or decision-making processes around a Delphi technique can be poorly executed, particularly in the analysis. Um, the analysis, particularly where it's um, hidden and done anonymously and or done by the um, done by the researchers in a non-transparent way, can be open to abuse. Uh, if you're running an expert panel, a Delphi process, and you've got a really strong opinion one way or the other, it's reasonably easy for you to skew the results um, and hide that from everyone, uh, which would be very unethical as a researcher, but the potential is there, particularly if it's just done poorly uh, by an inexperienced researcher. There's also the overselling of the results. We're simply coming up with a consensus of opinion. It's not absolutely the truth laid down by God that this is what has to happen. Um, it's the opinion of a group of experts, and it's not even the unanimous opinion. It's the consensus of what's been able to be achieved through the process. Um, and there still may be some experts that have widely differing opinions, which may be perfectly valid, um, but fall outside of the consensus that's been achieved. And as mentioned, there is the potential there for deception. Um, and indeed the Oracle of Delphi, on which the Delphi process is named, um, the story behind that involved deception, where the Oracle gave the wisdom gave the truth as to what should be done, but that message didn't necessarily make it back to the king who had to make the final um, action on that decision. It was intercepted and changed. And researchers could change the message from the expert Delphic process um, before it gets back to those that will implement decisions from that. So there are issues around the Delphi process, but there are issues around any um, research process. All research processes have advantages and disadvantages um, and we're looking here at simply one but it does provide a range of advantages that a lot of other research processes have difficulty with. So the other paper by um, Nauri it goes through and looks in particular at how the Delphi technique is used in educational technology research. Uh, so again, exploring the processes involved. Uh, and you're quite familiar with those aspects. Um, some of the advantages of it, it can be, um, well, it can be quite lengthy if it needs to go through lots of rounds, but with digital technologies now, it can also be quite rapid um, through the use of technology to assist in processing the Delphi um, technique. 
the experience of the panels panelists are significant as we've been talking about and how it can be useful in predicting the future um, used in future studies research around making predictions so again how the Delphi technique is being used in particular for educational technologies research which is the focus of this particular course so that gives you a bit more background around the use of the Delphi technique and next week we're going to look into a little bit more detail about how we can analyze those processes uh, or the results of the Delphi technique to help make decisions um, including a few statistical techniques we can apply to assist in making it a little bit more robust beyond simply being a qualitative um, consensus process. I look forward to seeing you in the tutorials and discussing these aspects of educational technology research in some more detail.